You see this long, weird shape? That's that scaphocephaly I was telling you about. What is that exactly? Um, it's just the way the skull grows that uh, is... It's not standard. There's nothing... It's not... Nobody knows what causes it. But see, there's no suture there. Enclosed to the person was a very small child instead of as an adult. And it made the skull, when the brain grew, it couldn't grow out, it had to go back. Right. Um, but, um, so that's one way you can tell a person who was. Uh, well, uh, it's not common in black. It's more common in blacks than in whites, but it's not common in blacks. I see. Uh, but the more the shape of the eyes, the general face, the width of the face, uh, uh, it's a typical black face, but it's uh, uh, it's just one of those things you get to recognize. Could you just pull that so I can get a? And then face it towards me. Mm -hmm. And he had some American Indian ancestry. How can you tell? See this little prong of bone? Uh-huh. And uh, that's primarily American Indian and Asiatic. Uh-huh. Mm. Doesn't have it. Now is this collection, is this from uh, the... This is that one from the... From Calvert Street Bridge area. Oh, wh why don't you say that? Just do a whole introduction. What we're looking at now. Hmm. Around uh, 1960, the DC coroner got a, a collection of skeletons from an old burial ground of, near Calvert Street Bridge in the Adams Morgan area, and uh, or the Adamsville Road area. And it had been disturbed earlier, probably around 1940, by some construction. So that uh, the bones were just in any old which way, and there was no way of getting a skeleton together as a unit. Some long bones were found, but mostly skulls and skeletons. And apparently, I haven't seen any children's bones yet uh, in this collection. But apparently about 17 skulls survived and a miscellaneous batch of long bones, uh, arms and legs, but uh, haven't found those yet. Uh, now, how did you get into the, how did the uh, Smithsonian get possession of these bones? Uh, well, you can't keep them lying around the coroner's office and he had to do something with them. So it was either bury them or ask us if we could use them, and we could use them. So they transferred it to us. But uh, uh, anybody who's digging excavations who comes across bones uh, uh, has to find, has to figure out whether they're old bones or a recent crime. And so you call the police and uh, try and find out what's going on. And, uh, uh, if there's any local records of uh, there being a burial ground there associated with a church or a community, uh, then you uh, try and locate uh, whoever, whatever church is now in charge of that. And apparently, uh, whatever records there were, were lost. So, uh, it's a shame that the whole collection from 1940 couldn't have been dealt with properly, but... Um, what would have been the proper way to have dealt with it? Uh, excavate properly instead of uh, just diving in uh, like a dog digging up a bone. Uh, keeping the parts of a body together so that you could estimate people's height and age at death and look at... Uh, uh, read what you can of their life history from their skeleton. But uh, you don't just sort of throw things back and hope for the best. And, uh, if you're dealing with an excavation to build something, 
Uh, you probably have uh, gone through half the bones before the bulldozer recognizes that it's hit a bone. And by then it's uh, very difficult to uh, put things together. But if you can find the, bear, the bodies as they were buried, and so that you can see what was with them, uh, what position they're lying in, get some indication as to how they were buried, you can get, you can tell a lot about the economic status of the people, of whatever customs they are, <coughs> and by looking for uh, and, uh, customs that uh, if, that come in and out of use for time to time. Now I don't see on these any of the of the marks that would be sub that would indicate that uh, claws had been pinned around the head to keep the jaw from sagging uh, after death. And there was a time when these pins weren't used because they were too expensive and you didn't want to bury it. Uh, there was a time after the pins were being made commercially uh, that it didn't matter if you used up a couple of pins and uh, didn't recover them. And then after that period, uh, uh, there were uh, more cosmetically acceptable ways of dealing with the problem. So, what can uh, we tell? Can we tell anything from this collection? Um, well, these teeth are horrible, and this indicates that this person had been uh, lived well past uh, well past middle age. And this suture is still open, but this is closed. So that uh, this is somebody uh, who made it to 45 or 50, at least. They didn't ever go to a dentist, I, could, I can tell. They never had their teeth work on professionally. Well, well, were there dentists? Huh? They weren't dentists. As, they, as killing teeth, instead of just pulling them, is a relatively modern uh, practice. I see. And uh, as... Can you tell if these teeth have, have like just fallen out because of uh, it being a skeleton? Or could you tell if they were pulled out and then it resealed itself? Can you... Well, you know these were lost in life because the sockets healed over. Yes. Uh, these... Uh, this is bad decay and abscesses. So the teeth either fell out shortly before or shortly after death, around the time of death. And it's impossible to tell from this and the light up here. Right. So I wouldn't want to guess on that one. Now these teeth are pretty good. These teeth were present at death. Uh, this, of course, was present. This is the decayed stump. You can see where the cavity was, but the root's still in there. Yeah. And, uh, but these are just badly worn. And What's the identifying on there? The, the catalog number. You can tell from the shape of the chin that it was a man and the bulging eyebrows. And this was a man. A young man. Why do you say young? So this suture usually fuses and disappears like that one uh, by age 25 or 30. Uh -huh. 
and this is still wide open and uh, so he was relatively young when he died and uh, these teeth aren't badly worn It's very little wear on those tooth, and, uh, so that's compatible with being a young person. Look at that cavity. But again, not much wear. Sutures have just closed. You can see the, where they were. And it's closed now. Well, at what age do sutures normally close? Of, uh, at what stage after leaving the station does the train pass a particular station? Uh, there's a sequence, uh, which is pretty complicated. and. Uh, so you learn the sequence and you know that it's before this one closed but not but that one hadn't closed yet and, uh, and you assume but you don't know that a person was closing sutures at the usual time instead of early and late you, you know there's an awful lot of assumptions there but all things being equal the things are never equal. And the, here again is some of this coffin wear where the skull had fallen back. But again, uh, those teeth are practically unworn. And no signs of arthritis in the joints. No signs? No. So this is a fairly young... Yeah, this would be a, someone under 30. And you might even be able to see that the sutures are open on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, they close on the inside before they close on the outside. I don't know why, they just do. We've been doing it for several million years. see practically no wear and as a matter of fact this one hasn't even gotten to the occlusal plane so that means that that wisdom tooth was just erupting so we're talking about someone who's really young here yeah this would be a boy of 13 oh no 18 or 20 18 or 20 yeah Future's wide open. Now how how old do you think that skull is? No way of telling. No way of telling. It's been in the earth long enough to absorb the color of the earth. But uh, how long does that take? Mm, Twenty years. Uh, he's got one usable tooth left. Now this would be an old timer here, huh? Yeah. How old do you uh, estimate that skull is? Mm. Well, 
first of all, it's a woman. And, uh, if it's true that you lose teeth every time you have a baby, uh, that would uh, mess up the age estimate on her. But, uh, I imagine the, the nutrition wasn't all that great. I'm sure she didn't get vitamin supplements. Why don't we keep, stay on this, let me, um let me examine, uh, let me see the label on that. Now what's that about nutrition? You can tell something about what the diet was based on what the teeth looked like? Well, there are other clues. Now see this funny little saddle shaped yip there? It's not straight across. Show it to me again. Is See that slight little dip right there? Yes. And it is, isn't straight across. Yes. But uh, that's a growth thing that happens with people who aren't, are poor and not eating a good diet. And uh, so probably as a kid, she wasn't getting uh, all the vitamins and things she needed. I don't know whether that had anything to do with her losing her teeth early, but uh, it just could could be lots of reasons. Just hold it like that, yeah. How old do you think that's going? I mean, how many years was she? Um, age at death. Um, Forty or fifty, at least, possibly older. Okay. See how those teeth are sticking out? Yes. And. Uh, He'd probably pretty buck toothed, but he'd lost a number of his front teeth. That, uh... That's really pronounced buck yeah. teeth. What, what would have caused that? It's, it's one of those things. You have it. It, it, it just happens. Uh, Certainly not <laughs> which a lot of people uh, nowadays think will cause you to uh, have malocclusion. So for the older timers, these teeth are in very bad condition, I think, uh, compared, to, uh, compared to whites from the same... Uh, I don't think so. You don't think so? Uh, We're trying to get some. Here's war. Here's where, but there's no cavities. No, but this. You say this is a younger person. Um, well, 35 or 40. Uh huh. But the teeth are worn, but I don't see any cavity. There's gum recession. The good old pyorrhea. Oh, I see. Is the the bone for the teeth should be down there, and it's receded. Now, what do you think the diet was for people back who, back in uh, the late 1800s, 1700s? Well, if you were poor, you were probably eating a lot of corn and potatoes and, uh, and cheap stuff. Uh -huh. and, uh, but, uh, it's good, solid, healthy bone. It's, and the teeth are good despite the care that they've not had. Now, some of these skulls were found in, in areas where there were handles, which would mean that they were not well, poor people, right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, in a lot of groups, there were burial societies, and uh, you contributed a nickel a week or something, and uh, when you died, 
uh, the, the, you could pool the resources and have uh, some sort of a some sort of a, a funeral. Yes. But, uh, nothing fancy. Or it could be, uh, if these were slaves, it could be somebody uh, that the owner respected and uh, for whatever reasons of his own, he might have uh, provided a cheap coffin. Who knows? Okay. Uh, the, there's just too much speculation. And if whoever found it in the first place had just dug him up properly, you'd know who was in a box and who wasn't and what kind of a box it was. Right. But idiots always ruin things, and uh, uh, you can't legislate against idiocy. It'd be nice if you could, but uh, so you have to do what you can from what's left to try and uh, put together a part of a picture. Now, uh, one of those uh, collections over there. Uh, the church was being moved and somebody carefully excavated the skeletons around it. Mm -hmm. And you can find out something from in that sort of a deal. Yes. But, uh, here it's very difficult. Here you, you do what you can with what you got and hope for the best. Yes. His teeth are worn. These are busted off. With the good teeth. These look like people who are perfectly able physically to live to be 40, 50, 60 years old. And, uh, which meant that they had had at least minimal good food, minimal good treatment, uh, minimal good housing and minimal hygiene. And, uh, you can tell someone who hasn't. Uh, the bones are thin and, uh, and, well, of course, the shape of the skull depends on what you had as a child when you were growing. Yeah. But, uh, and if you have the rest of the skeleton, uh, you can recognize tuberculosis and scars of injuries and that sort of thing. But we don't have the rest of the skeleton. And you can see, uh, to some extent, whether the bone has become demineralized, you know, sort of like osteoporosis, but uh, for malnutrition. There's no sign of that in these. You know, but uh, uh, you don't have the rest of the skeleton, so you can't say. Now, uh, Lucille, let me ask you um, a question about the work you did with um um, Luann, mm -hmm. what, what did she, that was back in 1981, if you remember. Oh, uh, well, that's so long ago, I can't really remember anything worth telling. I see. But I don't remember her finding uh, very much in the way of skeletons. No. And, uh, so, and if there's no skeleton, there's, I have nothing to contribute. Right. Uh, okay. Terrific. Yeah. I think, I think we have enough. Yeah, good. Thanks very much. Yeah. Hmm. Oops.